1939. The place, Willits, California. The action, very little. As usual, all's quiet in Willits and the Little Lake Valley. Such quiet doesn't agree with Scoop Kenworthy because he is the reporter for the Willits News and no news is bad news for Scoop. Here he is anxiously awaiting some important event to happen nearby so that he will not have far to walk to get back to the typewriter. Too bad, missed a good front page article there. Whoa there, young man. How about some news? Wait a minute, any news? Of course, the best place to obtain the latest scandal is Young's Barbershop. Hey, Ward. Come here. How about some news? Watch Dr. Cox now. The doctor sees a chance to make a profit. If the doctor were big-hearted, he would tell Scoop that he was robbing the till. That's all right. Keep the change, Ward. Nice fellow, this Dr. Cox. That's flashy Leotis Davis with the brush. Dr. Cox is a heavy tipper with Ward Young's money. Chief Jake Tom stands four square for law and order. Well, Chief, what's the latest news? Any holdups, murders, robberies today? The Chief says no. The Chief and Scoop practice the ancient wisdom of Confucius. They hear no evil, see no evil. And so the thugs take poor Elwyn Van for $20. City clerk Alan Sacre approaches. Well, Scoop, what's the news? Great suggestion, says Scoop. Let's go up here to the Willits Dairy and have a glass of milk on that. They order two glasses of milk, grade A. Great stuff, this milk. Builds sound teeth. Takes business away from the dentists. The Lions Club meets in the hotel van. 
President Smalley opens the meeting. Dick Bechtel, Bill Ford, Fred Hamilton, Roy Good, and many others are present. They make suggestions for livening up the town and creating some news for Scoop, who is waiting patiently in the background. The members disagree as usual and nothing is accomplished. Coach Cameron suggests an Easter egg hunt. The suggestion is received coldly. The Lions Club fails to agree on a course of action. However, the next day, strange happenings are reported from various parts of town. This store manager will soon make a startling discovery. Employees register fear and panic. A broad-brimmed lady's hat and a stylish Mother Hubbard dress have been stolen. Could this be a clue? Yes, it is a clue. Upon discovering the stolen hat and dress, Mr. Jones immediately calls the police. All the really tough assignments are handled by the chief himself. Oh, what's the matter here? The car won't start. Must be dirty spark plugs. No, plugs are nice and shiny. Shucks, empty. I must call Roger's garage. Uh-oh. Exhibit A. The chief examines the evidence for fingerprints. Hello, hello, chief. What's that, out of gas? Okay, I'll be right over. 24-hour service is our motto. You may have guessed the situation here. Mr. Rogers is unable to get the service truck started. He checks the motor. It's okay. Turns instinctively to the gas tank. Checks the automatic gauge. Hey, Potter, bring some gas. What's this? Right, another clue.
Meanwhile, the town is experiencing many disturbing things. Take Betty's beauty shop, for example. See what happens. Donna Bray is frightened. You can tell by her hair. This girl is frightened, too. But she is calm in the face of danger. Hey, Chief, come quick. There's a prowler in our shop. That afternoon, Mr. Harris sets about his daily task of obtaining milk for the Spring Grove dairy customers. He obtains the bucket from Harris Jr. and heads for the production department. Observe how gentle and contented the cow is. What's the matter? No milk? Mr. Harris gives the cow a pep talk. Tries again. Still no milk. This is obviously a crime wave of major proportions. And there it goes. The town club is a great rendezvous of milk drinkers. Here comes one of the heaviest consumers, John Petronavi. He is undoubtedly going in here to get his morning glass of grade A. Yes, I was right, he orders a large glass. But the prowler is right on the job. He never misses a free handout. And Mr. Petronavi is greatly surprised to find his glass empty. Look, there it goes. The gentleman in hot pursuit of the prowler is none other than Officer Bill White. Help, a cop is after me. Never fear, says Max Estel, I will protect you. You can't harm one of our customers. Can't you read the sign? This is the safe way. Anyone who enters our premises is safe from all harm. Hey there, Prowler, have you paid for that milk? The Prowler loves to peek into the homes of students, particularly the studious ones, like Erlene Johnson. The moral to this is, if you want to be visited by the Prowler, do your homework. Was that a masculine voice I heard? Marjorie Clark is interested. Next victim, Rennie Bilio. One quick turn of the crank and he has the chief on the phone. Hello. 
It's love at first sight. A panic of calls jams the switchboard at the telephone office. The tremendous demand for policemen is vastly exceeding the supply. And Mr. Sacre is almost helpless in the face of such a crime wave. So he hangs out a sign. Of course, the prowler visits the high school during public schools week and is immediately attracted to the girls' gym classes. The teacher, Miss Whitehouse, sees the prowler and yells for help. The fearless Jerry Brown comes to the rescue of the frightened girls. The prowler takes a hurried visit through the halls. And emerges from the front door. He sees a chance for a ride and takes it. Which in this case is Principal Roy Good's automobile. The owner of the car is not far behind. Too late. This picture proves that if a police department can't be useful, at least it can be handsome. Here is the prowler taking his morning quota of milk while Quad is busy waiting on Betty Hall. The prowler's motto is self-help Carry your own basket and don't give the proprietor a chance to shortchange you. The prowler yields to temptation. So, it was you who set off that bomb. Ten years for this. Thanks to the prowler, Scoop is very busy now. It's all he can do to keep the town posted of the prowler's deeds. Here he is, busy as a bee, so to speak. A real worker bee now, not just a drone as in the old days. Notice how he uses both hands while typing. Here is Mr. Hammond burning up the linotype machine. And here is how the business improvement affects Wilson's. Notice the steady stream of customers entering the store. At this rate, Mrs. Wilson will soon be sold out of Willett's News.
A noticeable effect of a visit by the prowler is a sharp headache. These girls have seen the horrible peeper and are now required to seek some medicine to relieve the shock. This means more business for Mr. Livingston. Eager customers are Leah Case, Grace Wood, and Betty Hall. Of course, the headache pills are just a temporary cure. The only permanent cure would be to kill the prowler. That's where Johnson's hardware store comes in. I'll take this double-barreled model, says the young lady. And here is the boss himself selling the famous Johnson Prowler Trap. Where is the bait for this trap, she says. Oh, you get the bait over there at Wonacott's Grocerteria, says Mr. Johnson. The girl wants to know if this bait is absolutely guaranteed to catch a prowler. Or your money back, says Mr. Wonton. Even after every precaution has been taken, there is still a danger of being tickled or pinched unexpectedly by the prowler. That means it would be wise to take out prowler insurance. Mayor Bill Whitney is the agent. And here comes a potential customer. Notice the sales technique of the mayor. He dramatizes prowler strangulation then Prowler gunfire. Miss Case is convinced and agrees to sign on the dotted line. The Prowler has also created more jobs in the town. The police force must be doubled or tripled in size. These boys are about to apply for the jobs. Why, yes, says Officer White. Sure, line up there and let me have a look at you. Now, the most important thing about a policeman is his feet. They must be big and flat. Now, boys, look at your feet and see if you meet that requirement. Now, the next qualification is a nasty frown, like this. All right, now, fellows, let's see you frown. There's Ed Fletcher, Frank Cerruti, Jimmy Page, 
Ventura Perez, Homer Powers, Jimmy Mays. Very good. You passed all the tests. Here are your badges. Now, fellows, I will give you a few lessons in how to catch the prowler. First is the prowler bait. Now, let us examine the prowler clues. We have found these pencils at the scene of the prowler's crime. And now we come to the most important piece of evidence, the prowler's footprints. Now let's set out some bait. Hide behind this corner over here and see if we get a bite. Sure enough, here he comes, Schlegel the butcher. He's nibbling, he's got the bait and we've got our man. All right, now, tiptoe, boys, and don't let him get away. We've got you. Don't move or I'll shoot. Stand still while I examine your footprint. No, they don't match. Guess you're not the prowler after all. Look, there it goes. The boys sample the pickles. If they like them, they may buy some. That was a narrow escape, so the prowler seeks refuge in the little lake garage. Wait, boys. You wait out here. I'll handle this all by myself, says the uh, police. Wow, says Mr. Bobbitt. There's murder going on in there. What's this? The prowler with Officer White's gun and uniform? But where's Officer White? The new policemen are not in good condition. They tire easily. But they see a chance for a ride, and so they deputize Tory McKenzie's racer. No gas in the car but plenty nearby. And the chase is finally underway. 
Looks like Howard Bobbitt has had a breakdown. The Prowler supervises and smokes a cigar. But he can't wait any longer. So the Prowler hails another ride, this time in a Golden Eagle Mills truck. The posse is obviously headed in the wrong direction. The Prowler arrives and is met, of course, by the gallant Scotsman, Mr. Ford. The Prowler is impressed by so much courtesy and promises to call back later when Mrs. Ford is not peeking out the window. Prowler fuel is running low by this time and must be replenished. The fiend enters a fuel station and orders the special for today. So good, eh, Prowler? Stomach ache. This is the Prowler garage where repairs are made. Chief mechanic is Dr. Raymond Babcock. He gives the prowler the once over and says what you need is an x-ray. Step right into the other room. Good doctor is assisted by Alvera McKenzie and Roberta Cook. And here is the x-ray. And now the doctor is about ready to give the diagnosis. What you need is more milk. The 
Prowler says, well, maybe I'm wrong, and heads straight for another fuel station, Ray's Cafe. Prowler can now lick its weight in Wildcats. Just for good measure, though, the Prowler is going to purchase a little concentrated energy at the Purity Store. One box of pep, please. Prowler sees something. He orders more pep. Oh, oh, that's bad. Officer White is in the doorway. I'll need all the pep I can get. Folks, you probably know from experience that bare feet on a hot sidewalk is not the last word in comfort. Then you can sympathize with our hero. The prowler is thinking of investing in a pair of shoes. And of course, the toggery is the place to make such a purchase. And Mr. Black is the man to wait on you. The prowler is very particular. Nothing but the best, and very dainty, too. The Detective Bureau is at work checking over the footprints of the hardened criminals and comparing them with those of the Prowler. Yes, sure enough, Dr. Cox is the prowler. Quick, Bill, run over to the mercantile building and arrest Dr. Cox. I should have known all the time. Aha! Living a double life, eh, Doc? But we've got you this time. Don't try to look innocent. We know you're the prowler. Wrong again. There goes the prowler down the street after handsome John Petronavi. The prowler seems to be an ardent lover. That probably comes from drinking so much milk. But John Petronavi is shy. Anyway, he's already married.
Go away, she says. What do you mean trying to steal my husband? Take that and that. If the prowler is going to catch handsome John, it will need more power. So it visits the power company, which markets a scientific device known as the Charm Dynamo. Simply turn the crank, get a fresh charge of glamour. The prowler tries the machine on Petronavi. No sale. The charm machine didn't work. So the prowler is going to try perfume. Sprouse Reeks is the place to buy expensive perfume. Perfume conquers all. So now the prowler takes John to the Willets lumber yard to purchase lumber for their love nest built for two. Well, folks, it looks like the beginning of the end. Excellent shot, right on target. The prowler is wounded, perhaps fatally, and is forced to make a second visit to the hospital. Dr. Smalley gives a complete physical exam. Looks bad, real bad. But the prowler has one last deathbed request. He tells the doctor he would like to take out some life insurance. The prowler wisely chooses ritual insurance for this timely purchase. Mr. Ritual loves to sell life insurance to customers who have just been fatally wounded.
Now, quick, back to the hospital. Life is ebbing away fast, fast, fast. Too bad. Looks like the end of the trail for the prowler. But who is this intruding at such a tragic moment? Scoop, the news reporter, of course. Now we'll find out who the prowler really is. 